I worked hard because I was dyslexic and I was trying to cover it up. And so I started out at the very bottom of, the, of my class of 30. Born in 1922 to American parents in Jena, Germany, John Goodenough grew up outside of New Haven, Connecticut, dyslexic, struggling to read. Still, he'd soldier through high school beating dyslexia only to see the prospect of college stolen by war. Sometime after high school, on an academic field trip in the mountains of Norway, Goodenough was with six German friends as they received their draft notices. And I shook my hand to them and wished them well and said, well, I'm sorry, but I have to fight on the other side. But the end of World War II brought a long-awaited change of fortune. Goodenough was selected by the Army as one of 21 veterans to study physics at the University of Chicago. Of course, the registration officer took one look at me and he says, I don't understand you veterans. Don't you know that anybody had ever done anything interesting in physics? Had done it by the time he was your age? And you want to begin? Good enough accepted the challenge. He entered university with only $35 to his name and left in 1952 with a PhD and one of the best minds for electron physics in the world. That's how I officially became a chemist. <laughs> He wound up at MIT's Lincoln Lab, where over the next decade, he'd help invent one of the first forms of computer memory. And after that, took a position at Oxford University and turned his attention to batteries. It was at the end of the 1960s when the first energy crisis was about to occur. Looking at a world of diminishing fossil fuels, Goodenough wondered, could he build a battery better than existing ones? A battery has three parts, two metal-based electrodes, and a barrier material separating them. When the battery is connected to a device, positively charged particles called ions pass through the barrier. This frees up negatively charged electrons, which have to flow through the device to get to the low energy side. That's your electricity. When the last electrons have left the high energy side, the battery is dead. How long a battery lasts depends largely on the chemical structure of the high energy metal. And in the late 1970s, Goodenough was looking into lithium, a metal with special properties scientists thought could produce a stronger battery with a life longer than anything available at the time. But Goodenough faced a serious challenge. At the time, all batteries were manufactured in a charged state. The battery rolls out of the factory ready and waiting to power your electronics. But lithium was unstable if made this way. Goodenough found a revolutionary solution that challenged the status quo. He realized that he could make a stable lithium battery if it was manufactured in a dead state it could be brought to life with a simple charge. Goodenough's designs produced a rechargeable battery so strong and with such a long life that manufacturers changed their ways. The entire industry responded with innovation. And in 1991, Sony released the world's first lithium ion battery using Goodenough's materials, making possible cameras, laptops, tablets, and phones, the portable devices that untethered humankind from our electrical outlets and put the power of modern electronics into hands and pockets around the world. While the lithium ion battery is still revolutionizing the way we live and travel, Goodenough feels it's time for the next advancement. At 95 years old, he goes to work each day faithful that the ingenuity and will exists to realize an Earth free from its dependence on fossil fuels. I don't want man in his greed to exploit the resources of Earth to turn what should be a garden into a desert. <laughs>